Hey guys, I hope you're doing well tonight. Um, Katie clearly didn't sleep at all this weekend. There's, I don't even, I lost count how many posts she put up. Just about anything and everything from eight passengers to Cody to Robin to uh, the Duggars. Like she just hasn't s slept. I do not understand how this isn't worrisome for her husband. The only way I could think of it is that he clearly just doesn't give a shit. Remember, she's the goose that laid the golden egg, and I think that's all he clearly cares about. I don't think he gives a shit that he sleeps in B's room. I think he's loving the fact that she sleeps with her son, so he doesn't have to deal with her. And the fact that she's never around, she's always online, I think he loves it. I really do. Okay, now with that out of the way. So, I'm being told by quite a few people right now that apparently Charlotte is going to start a campaign to get other YouTubes, YouTubers off the platform that she feels shouldn't have a platform. Now, I never heard that from her mouth. These are things that I'm being told. And I'm also being told that she was warned about the content she was making on MS and that that's why her channel was taken from her. Again, I, can't, I do not have proof of this. This is what I'm hearing. I just want to say one thing, though. I really hope that's not true and that's not the case for what Charlotte plans on doing for this campaign. I hope she was just angry and said that because she was angry and isn't going to do that because... I mean, you just can't send your people out to attack other creators because you don't feel they belong on this platform. That's not right. That's not fair. That's, no, you don't do that. So I hope I'm wrong. And it's just hearsay. But I did hear that. Have you guys heard of any of that? Is this what her attention is? Um, I know she's over on Rumble, but I haven't watched her in a few days. Um, usually I do, but I have, yeah, I haven't watched her in a couple days. So it, did she say this? Is this something that she, she's really going to start this campaign? And if so, who, who is she going after? Who is, does she not want to have a platform? I mean, I can imagine one of them would be real, so that's understandable. Considering he did report her from what he said from his own mouth, I did hear that. No, it's just, I don't know, maybe she's upset. Maybe she wants us to, ha I have no idea. It's all hearsay. But let me go, let me know what you guys think or if you heard that. Like, what's going on? Anyways, all right, so here we're going to go, and we're going to start on KJ's posts, which are... <sighs> I'm just going to say massive trigger warning, because a lot of this stuff is her boner, which is Cody. Um, anything to do with RAPE and CSA and SA and whatever the fuck comes out of her mouth. All right, here we go. Cody Brown admitted on camera that he was always at Robin's house in his office. Or garage. However, earlier this year, sources told without a crystal ball, Cody spent most of his time locked in Robin's bedroom at her house during the day while the kids were watched by the nanny. There is no proof to this whatsoever. So again, you don't believe what without a crystal ball says. Janelle supported this claim last night by saying Cody had a shiny and new relationship, which is code for polygamy for the man having a new sexual partner. Um, Katie, that is not Janelle saying that he was locked in Robin's bedroom. And the kids were being watched by the nanny. So, no, that's not what she said. My source told me that they had lunch with Cody during this period. During the lunch, Cody alleg allegedly went into graphic de detail about the best sex he ever had in his love. You mean life, moron? Oh, my God, you don't even know how to write. They claim Cody likened the sex to a drug and he couldn't get enough. Mm -hmm. As a result, the newlyweds many a time holed up in their bedroom so Cody could get his pencil wet as he would say. So again, my sources don't lie. That's because you don't have fucking sources. And this is disgusting. And you have no right talking about this at all. You're disgusting. Why are you saying this? Cody wants to get his pencil wet? What is wrong with you? You're sick. You're disgusting. You're vile. You should be one of the ones that are not allowed on any platform for that matter. Cody Brandon admitted on camera that he was always at Robin's house in his office or garage. I was at Robin's house working in my office. I mean, bedroom. That's not what was said again. I have to say, the more I learn about, I don't even know how to pronounce this, but the, I'm, uh, uh, I just want to read this just because, so you guys know just how disgusting this woman is. Romaki, maybe? I'm probably wrong. So I have to say, the more I learn about this case, the more angry I get that they abused asylum laws. Here we effing go. At every turn, this family has lied about needing asylum from a literally developed and thriving country. Oh, I'm sorry, you were there, you know these people, you know the rules, you know the laws, huh? It's new to me. It's offensive to all people that literally flee actual violence and actual government per persecution based on human rights violations. 
their rights were not violated. Wow. The parents overstayed their visa, are here illegally, and it's time to go. No more delays. Lydia married a man that was involved in the insurrection that attempted to overthrow our democracy. Just because you're a Christian and white, you've got, a way, you've got way more time than the average illegal immigrant that faces deportation. Wow. So now you're making it about race. You're good for that, aren't you? Just go. Stop digging in the courts. Stop wasting taxpayers' money trying to have laws passed just for your family. It's the arrogance and entitlement of it all. I'm 44 years old, born and raised a USA citizen. Never once have I asked lawmakers to pass a law for me. Go away. So that's why you're, pa you're pissed off because you don't get a law made after you? Is that what this is about? Because it's not about you? Grow the fuck up, Katie. Oh my God, was Trace Bates at the January 6th attack on the I IS Capitol? Yep. Yes, he and Lawson were both there. Both Trace Bates and Lawson Bates should be held accountable for becoming domestic terrorists on January 6th, 2021. Terrorists for Trump. You guys need to get a life. Yes, and he and Lawson were both there. I suggest you to message Leo Web Techs on Instagram. He's a programmer who handles account recoveries like shadow banned, hacked, banned, and deleted account. Were the children born here? Then she says, Isn't me or Cody's neck getting wider and wider every year? Is he using steroids? I'm starting to wonder. Katie, get a job. Holy fuck. This is not even a quarter of the post she put on the weekend. This is crazy. That meltdown by Robin was hysterical. She really thinks we believe her. Wow. Robin Brown's staring in. Not start... Starring in not one tear while I pretend I don't know that I blew the family to smithereens. You're sick, Katie. The Emmy for Best Female in a Reality Series goes to Christine Brown. She's calling them out left and right, and it's glorious to hear her. And Janelle no longer lying to Cody. This is brilliant TV. Really, Katie? Because you have shit on every single Brown. Every single one. So now when they do what you feel is right, then you like them? But if they do something else that you think is wrong, you shit on them? You're not a good person. He seems like he's either on steroids or testosterone or something. The red skin, the anger, etc. Mouse says testosterone doesn't increase neck size. Can someone please look that up? I know that, but steroid use does. I said testosterone as well because of his outbursts. You tell her, Ryan. People love to watch his hateful, erratic behavior, so this is the way he acts. Most of it is scripted. It's all bullshit. But as long as there's viewers, the show will go on. We really do not know what goes on behind closed doors. Him and Robin are laughing at us, and they take the money in. We are their scam. This right here, I'm only happy to be able to say, I've only watched about 15 minutes of one show one time. KG watches for me, LOL. No, Katie obsesses over it, is what she does. Six-pack abs? When? Where? All I can remember is seeing Cody's bare chest is when he jumped in the mud pond in his underpants. It was wholly unattractive. The more lies you tell, the thicker the neck and more pronounced the, the goatier becomes. Oh my gosh. The way he acts so angry all the time, I think he is when I take presnidone. It makes me cranky. If he's taking them for bodybuilding, it's most likely not under the care of a doctor. And we all know how proud he is of his six-pack abs. You don't take presnidone for one? Oh my god, for bodybuilding. That's for allergies, you fuck. Oh my god. I think the steroids she's referring to is testosterone for working out, not presidone. That is a completely different thing. Thank you, Corianne Howell Smith. Moron. Oh, I know it's different, but presidone is still a steroid and it helps me. Yeah, but it's not for what you're saying. <laughs> it's for severe allergies. I get side effects from it, and eating everything in sight and being cranky or having anxiety are my personal side effects. His face, his face is really gone, and he's scary the way, the way always so angry. But explain some of his rage too. Creepy. I think he's taking high. Or HGH, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been saying that for a while. He has roid rage. The muscles are flexed more often and is more toned. This indicates he's been keeping his jaw clenched a lot more over the last couple of seasons compared to earlier seasons. Mouse says, nah, I clenched my jaw and my neck doesn't grow that wide. Have you seen your neck? You are clenched all the time and your neck is full of veins and it's gross. Surprised? No. Maybe because he's acting erratic. Mouse says, what Mary actually wanted to say to Robin tonight. It was so obvious that she was so over Robin's bullshit and lies. She knows that Robin knows what happened. It was amazing hearing Mary get snarky with Robin and then saying in her confessional that Robin's opinion that Christine didn't have a deal breaker? 
is meaningless. Really? Mary doesn't like you to remember that, Katie. Because you tried fucking with her one time, and it didn't work, did it? She called you right out. Oh my god, here we go. This group's name, Robin Brown's Eyebrows. Okay, so you're allowed to sit there and laugh and make fun of Robin, but when there's groups made of you, you have a shit fit. And you cry, and you whine, and you say they're haters, and they're trolls, and they don't know what they're talking about. When all you really do is prove the truth. How many groups is there of you? There's so many. Why? Because people need to know the truth about you. This group name, and she's laughing her ass off, and she's dead. Robin's, Robin Brown's eyebrows. Okay. So, apparently, she can laugh at Robin, but nobody can laugh at her. Yeah, okay. Like, KJ's diaper? There's so many. Katie Joyless? KJ's a lawyer? Like, there's many, but we're not allowed to laugh at that. Only when she says it's okay to laugh at Robin. Oh, look, here we go. Shared, his, shared in the Sister Wives, the Brown Family Facebook page. You're so not funny. No one allowed inside expect nanny. Robin's, no, Cody's rules. I wanted to sit on a porch with my sister wives with our kids and grandkids. This is stupid. Oh my God, here we go, another post. While Robin was fake crying last night about the cheap and broke version of the Brown family, I couldn't help think about Robin's first husband and his family. Of course, because you like to rub salt in wounds and you like to, you literally like to run your mouth. In the short span of nine years, Robin stole over 30K from her in-laws, left them completely broke, alienated her kids from their dad and grandparents to cover up her lives of being a swindler. <laughs> okay, you know what, Katie, if I were you, I would take this back because this is what you do. Once again, you're harping on other people for the shit that you actually do and have been caught for. She defamed and slandered the family and her ex-husband to the nation on Sister Wives, forced an adoption, and told her kids that their dad was unsafe. You cannot force an adoption. The dad has to sign, idiot. All the while, she played a damsel in distress to Cody that was in need of saving. Using her coercion and manipulation, Robin made Cody fear that her kids could be taken from the family at any time, but pushing the need for an adoption. Robin used every resource she had to dismantle the family by causing Cody to divorce Mary. Then once becoming the legal wife, Robin's shopping addiction was finally able to take hold. She got her mansion in Flagstaff and began filling it with expensive art and antiques. Amethyst, crystals, collectibles, tea sets, china, furniture, electronics, clothing, and so much more. Are you jealous, Katie? Because all you have is stained, disgusting couches and rugs with piss and shit all over them from your animals because you don't let them out. Her home became such a nightmare and hoarding and trying to hide the money she used and stole from the family that she seemingly stopped allowing filming in her home. Her home was not only a gold mine of her trophies, but I thought you said it was a hoarder's house, but a hoarder's cave of shopping bags and unopened crap she bought with family money. All the while, her sister wives and their kids went without time, resources, and their own property. They lost their retirements and saving to fuel her need for things. So Robin, you caused this, not anyone but you and Cody. Oh my God. It's a broken version. Yes, Robin, you know all about broken marriages and alienating children from their bio father like you've done with the Brown family. Uh-huh. Oh, look, another post. Since the end of last season, certain tabloids have run very anti-Christine and anti-Janelle narratives. Yeah, you're one of the mouth, only you're not a tabloid. You're just a mouthpiece. During this period, the outlets used anonymous sources to claim Christine was turning Janelle against Cody. Last night, I noticed that many of the narratives Cody and Robin tried to spew were exactly leaked stories that were in tabloids months ago. They were leaks that Christine was trying to do female empowerment with Janelle, that Janelle would never have left without Christine pushing her. Other leaks include that Janelle and Christine were building a brand and trying to get revenge on Cody. Another was that Christine posts on social media to taunt Cody. Christine was smeared in the tabloids as a vindictive, vengeful, jealous woman that was never satisfied with what she got and only wanted to hurt Cody. This is exactly the narrative that Robin and Cody are spewing on the show. You did the same thing. You have shit on every fucking one of these women. So shut up. For months, I suspected that they were leaking to the tabloids to run a smear campaign against Christine. Last night's episode sealed it for me. Okay, yeah, because you know everything. Cody and Robin repeatedly alluded to and said that Christine was jealous, never satisfied, lying about her time with Cody, and she was vengeful with no reason to leave Cody. The tabloid that they leaked to pays per trip for exclusive. Each tip can net them over 500. It sure seems like they had financial incentive to smear Christine for money. For your information, this is why. Mouth never pays sources and never pays for information. Payment to people can lead to false stories and motive to lie. That's a lie right there because you've admitted it. So stop lying. Oh my gosh. Cody and Robin running to the tabloids. Outed on last night's episode. Oh my gosh. If Cody wasn't with Robin's family, then where was he? He wasn't with the other three. Also, if he spent a crazy amount of time in the office at Robin's, he was using his room as an escape from all his responsibilities. Mouth says, prattling. 
That's what men do. They're always looking for new women. You're sick, Katie. Christine also had the den, which had dust. It's just another way to blast Christine. Boy, this guy really hated Christine for messing up his gig. He had Mary and Janelle in friend mode for years. He even told wives not to watch the show after April 2021. They all stopped tweeting about it. Mary always said she lived it. So why watch it? She had no clue he was backstabbing her, but he stopped caring in season 15. He just couldn't get them to leave. That's when I adore Mary, saying Cody made the choice because their religion men aren't to ask for them to leave or they can be gods. Can't be gods. He is gay. He was probably spending time with a boy toy, just saying. Like, you can't say shit like that. Robin danced around the boys saying if he, if they made up with Cody, they were welcome. But if not, it would cause a fight and ruin her day. And she won't allow that. She also said she didn't have control of that. So it turned out badly. She wants to control everything. She pushed a little so hard, too hard. Didn't want the other wives to leave the needs their income. She thought they would all be like Mary. The first three wives into one house. The four houses came into play once Robin entered the family. This separated all kinds of kids and moms. Robin is the one that caused the separation. And they escaped to Las Vegas to avoid alleged criminal action. But Robin's stepfather lived in Las Vegas, convenient for Robin and Robin's mother. Las Vegas is so much closer to St. George, where Robin's mother lived, than Lee. The Vegas move was convenient for Robin's mom, so she could more easily visit both Robin and her husband. The original wives' kids have been to place twice for Robin's benefit. So much for Cody always saying, the women are always free to leave, and I won't stand in their way. That is unless there is, no, there is money to be made off the story for this show. Seems like it's okay to leave, as long as you don't actually leave. Holy fuck, another one. Jody Hildebrandt. Through her attorney, demanded an expedited detention hearing due to life-threatening medical issue. The judge has scheduled that hearing for today. However, hours before the hearing was to begin, both women filed a motion to continue the detention hearing in order to sift through copious amounts of discovery. Defendants rarely seek a continuance for detention hearings, and this is an unusual request given both women wanted to prison. It's not that unusual, actually. Something tells me that as discovery is reviewed by their attorneys that they aren't so sure the women will be granted release in such... In cases such as this, where the evidence and abuse is clear, the defense has a very challenging time proving the defendant is safe for release. No shit, Katie. The parties were granted a continuance for hearing without a date as requested by both women's lawyers. Exactly. So it's not that hard, unheard of, Katie. This is an interesting development and seems the state's case is a lot stronger than women suspected it would be. Uh-huh. Oh my God, look, there's another one. Ruby Frankie's attorney, Lamar Winward. That she will be in court. What? Ruby Frankie's attorney, La Lamar Winward, that she will be, again, spelling mistakes, that she will be incarcerated for the foreseeable future. The expectation she gave to KSL that Ruby will not be getting out anytime soon. It's my bad guess that, as he's had time to review the discovery, the idea of fighting her release given the evidence against her may be futile. Stay tuned. Holy fuck, another one. Kevin Frankie attended a juvenile court hearing today regarding the custody of his children. Ruby Frankie was at the hearing remotely. According to KUTV Utah, neither of them spoke at the hearing. The judge set a pretrial date for October 17, 2023. Just like yours is October 3rd. Oh, we all can't wait. Last week, the parties met with the state for mediation through the mediation doesn't appear to have been fruitful. The judge is allowing one more attempt at mediation on October 11th, which will be in-person mediation. Kevin Frankie's attorney, attorney spoke to KUTV following... The hearing. As we said in the beginning, we're just working toward trying to get this family healed and get these kids back where they should be. Attorney Randy Custer said they need to be with a family member. Preferably Kevin. That is what our goal is. We're working hard, Kevin and I, to convince the state that he's an incredible father as he was before all this happened and they became separated, he added. In the meantime, he's just working hard on getting himself back into position to be able to take these kids and raise them as good father would. The attorney representing the child is seeking to seal the crime case from the public. She argued in court that it's not the best internet in internet of the kids to the public. You're an idiot. It's intra Holy fuck, you need spell check. You need to proofread your bullshit, Miss Lawyer Wannabe, Miss fucking, what are you, reporter, journalist, whatever the hell you think you are? She argued in court that it's not the best internet of the kids for this to be public. The judge said they would consider the motion, though it did mention in sealing the case prevents Ruby's oldest children from attending the hearings. Sherry Frankie was in attendance at the hearing today. Based upon the statements by Kevin's attorney, the kids are not with any family members. It appears the state is not keen on Kevin obtaining custody, which is why he's having to prove to them that he will that he will a safe choice for kids. Again, you fucked up. Uh, given that the kids have been removed for almost a month and mediation isn't working to, those, to this point, Kevin and Ruby seem to be at risk of having their parental rights terminated. Stay tuned. Really? That's what they said? Because I didn't hear that. 
I hope all their kids sell everyone every ounce of A and these people are charged for it. The dad was present for some of this. I hope both parents lose their rights as parents and Kevin should not get the kids. He will end up abusing the kids like Ruby did. You don't know that. But anyways, going to be judgy here. I can't imagine a good dad abandons his kids for 13 months. If he'd seen them every other weekend, he'd see signs of abuse and, and deprivation. And the kids could have told him. It's just crazy neglect to leave them with no contact. If Sherry was willing... Could she take temporary custody of the little ones? I know it's a lot for her, but school, etc. I feel like RF and EF would especially benefit being with Sherry due to their closeness. She just recently deprogrammed herself. She she should see them, but she can't be responsible. Actually, I believe she can. That makes sense. I was also thinking about that part and the fact that she's in therapy helping herself. But yes, I agree. She should have visitation rates, along with possibly Chad, depending on his headspace. She just recently deprogrammed herself. She should... Uh, blah, 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 blah. I just read that. Why mediation? Is this just going on at the same time as the trial? How would Ruby possibly get custody in jail? Oh, look at this. Another one. Now we're on to Duggars, guys. Years ago, a woman that used the name Alice revealed that horrific abuse occurred inside the Duggar home. The woman who remained anonymous for years provided details about the Duggar family that no one in the public knew. Oh, so now you know? For over 15 years, her identity has been totally unknown, and journalists have tried to locate her. Today, Alice contacted me. Fuck off, Katie. No, she didn't. She did not contact you directly and identified herself for the first time. You're a liar. Jim Bob had long suspected that, suspected that Alice and Jim or Bobby Holt. I can confirm that Alice is not either of the Holts. In fact, Alice is no, no one any of you have ever heard of. She is associated with the family. That is Josh's fifth victim, the babysitter. Mm-hmm. Alice is, not, is still not ready to be completely public, but she did clear up a huge detail many have asked about for years. Then why are you making it public if this is in fact true, liar? Why didn't Josh abuse his sister Janet? Why was she the only sister spared? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my F. The answer is simple. According to Alice, by the time Josh began aing his sisters, Janet was already in puberty and developing. You're disgusting, Katie. You're fucking disgusting. I'm sorry, guys. I can't help but say the F word when it comes to this. This is fucking disgusting. Wow. How dare you say this shit? Josh had no interest in women. He has always been attracted to prepubescent girls. Also, Alice confirmed that Josh was given access to minor girls even after the AAP happened without safeguards. Yeah, okay. Also... Al Allison, sorry, Alice also revealed that the men in the home church discussed in Jill's book were absolute perverts with young girls. Some fathers allegedly forced their daughters to bind their breasts and wear loose clothing to stop them from feeling defrauded. My God, you're sick. Uh, Jim Bob blamed the girls for defrauding Josh. Jill even wrote in her book that she felt guilty for causing the abuse to happen. Alice also revealed that Josh was forced to confess his sins to the church after he was caught looking at PORN during Jim Holt's campaign. The men blamed Josh for causing Holt to lose. During the public confession, Alice alleged that the men disciplined Josh incredibly harsh, which left Michelle in tears begging for them to stop. Other mothers left the public discipline of Josh completely shaken by what they witnessed. I'll be speaking for Alice in more detail. You'll be speaking to Alice in more detail today, but she's coming forward now because of Jill's book. She said it's time for the truth, the full truth. Yeah, okay. Maybe he didn't want Jana because she was one of Gothard's girls. Nope, nothing to do with that. And way before, of course. You think you fucking know everything and you don't, Katie. How is it that this happened in a church another happened in a church and none of the other members spoke out about any of it? How is it kept so secret with so many people knowing the secrets? That's a good question, Debbie. It's been rumored on the internet for years. Yeah, but it was never proven, Katie. Nice try though. Because they all keep secrets, the Mormon Stories podcast has given me a lot of insight to how these religions work. It's really sad. As an active member of the church who was also severely wronged in a few situations as a teenager, the Mormon Stories podcast has oddly been eye-opening and healing at the same time. I agree with you, Amy, because I really do enjoy that channel, actually. The Mormon Stories podcast, it's really good. You guys should subscribe. Could someone define how they are using the word defrauding here? It's in the comments above. I'll tag you. I didn't understand either. I can't tag you, but it's a few comments under where I asked the same thing. Wait, the discipline during the public confession was physical, like multiple members of the congregation hitting him? I wonder if it was a crime that represented his. What do you mean a crime that represented his? I'm not familiar at all with their saying, so I don't understand a lot of things posted here. Like when defrauded was used in the OP, for example. Can you explain that to me? And how old was Josh at the time of this that occurred? I think he was 14 or 15. What? 
Wait, to stop who from feeling defrauded? What does defrauded mean to them? My brain can't even process that. I'm with you. I, I don't understand. I'm confused by that word too. I knew this was going to be bad, but I honestly had no idea that it was this bad. He or it has to be a hard thing to do. We've all asked that question. What happened to the babysitter and Josh? Now we will get the answer. Josh molested her also. Holy fuck, you guys. To stop the men in the church from, from feeling defrauded by the girls' developing bodies, basically the fathers of the girls had them bind their chests and wear loose-fitting clothes so not as to tempt the men in the church. Just another way for the girls to feel guilty about their bodies and then being taught that if a man does something to them, they brought it upon themselves. By tempting the man. I'm not going to say what I want to say because I'll get a permanent ban. So I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself aside from saying one word. Atrocious. Just horrible. Of course, don't blame the perverted old men. Blame the girl, young girls. Sickening. I did often wonder if Josh ever hurt his own children since his wife seemed to have her head in the sand. Unfortunately, in religious and patriarchal cults, this is quite common. I guess reading someone's personal account of it has just made it more real to me or something, but this has really upset me. Knowing they are treated that way, I knew that they had their own rules for stuff like this, but I didn't realize how disturbing they were. It is just the young girls that are still developing, or young girls and women too, even if they're married. Loosely, in mainstream, we would use the slang tease to describe it. Made a man what you but didn't follow through in their world. Even clothing that is too tight or hair not worn properly could cause the problem. Always the woman's fault. How people can think this way is honestly incomprehensible to me. I agree. It really is. How a parent can think that way about their own flesh and blood is baffling to say the least. I don't really know how to describe what I'm feeling right now. But it's a mixture of nausea, anger, sadness, and most notably, rage. Those poor children and their mothers, God would not approve any of this. They are deranged. Wait, what public discipline? Was he struck? I thought it was just a public confession what actually happened. This is my train of thoughts as well. How was it that this happened in a church and none of our other members spoke of any of it? How was it kept so secret with so many people knowing the secrets? It's been rumored on the internet for years and I already read this, didn't I? Uh, I read that too. Oh. Oh my god, I'm done. Yay! All right, well, you guys let me know what you think about what I was talking about with Charlotte, and if that's true, if you guys heard that, or like, what's going on? Um, I didn't catch our last two lives on Rumble. Uh, and well, let me know what you guys think about this shit. I think that they all should... She shouldn't even have this on any of her social media. It's disgusting. Um, at all. <laughs> like, at all. Anyways, I hope you guys have a fantastic night, and let me know what you think in the comment section. Have a good night, guys. Bye!